Hey guys, it's can opener. I'm gonna show you how I make my uh, HDPE sheet for slingshots. Here's a one I'm ready to cut slingshots out of. But they don't look like this on the first time through. This is the scraps from the you know I made a sheet, cut them out, remelted the scraps. I typically use buckets. So here's my pile of buckets all all cut up, and uh, I use an eight by eight brownie brownie tin. And it's very important that uh, that it's clean when it goes in there. So these are brand new buckets. Um, so that's the the rim of the bucket. Here's the bottom of the bucket. And so it, here's the outside, you know, cut off of that bucket like that. Okay, the, re the reason that I'm showing you that is I'm going to mix multiple colors in here. And if you intentionally trap air at the bottom of the pan, when it gets molten, it'll put, the air bubbles will push their way up through all the layers of multiple colors and you'll get a really cool marbled effect uh, like this. So this spot here, these little that look like Damascus steel, those are where air bubbles have migrated up through as it cooked. All right, so you see I got my uh, little toaster oven cooking here and it's on 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 400 Fahrenheit. Now, um, obviously if I put this piece in the bucket like this, the air is going to come out of that easily. But if I put that over like this, I'm going to trap an air bubble right there in the bottom of that tin that's going to have to work its way up through all the layers on top of it. You want them to be immaculately clean. And the fuzz from when you cut them, you know, you can clean that up like that if you want. If short fuzz doesn't have too much an effect, but if you have a big, long, hairy edge, um, it can end up making a... Instead of having crisp and clean lines, you'll have fuzzy areas between the colors. Okay, so here goes. Let's put, uh, put the green one in the bottom. Depending upon what kind of saw you cut this with, sometimes, like my band saw, it will leave a black film on there from the uh, blue blue finish on the bandsaw blade rubbing off. And if that is on there and you don't get, get it off, it'll mess up the where it sticks together. So I use a, uh, a knife and I'll scrape it like that anywhere that I see some of that black. Not that it being super clean is super critical. If you have some sawdust or crap in there, you'll basically just have a weak spot where it won't melt together. Okay. So that's a pretty good load to go in the toaster oven. Now, one of the things about my toaster oven is this is a little convection oven. So that's going to drop down in approximately five minutes. Okay, guys. It's been in the uh, oven for five minutes now. And that's where you start to see. Now. Typically the uh, the handles are going to come out from here and from there, so I'm going to use want that piece off the bottom to create a bubble about where I think the middle of that handle is going to be. And on the other side I'm going to try to create a bubble about where that bubble is going to be. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, load, I'm putting the load of this stuff in there a little bit at a time. Like I said, make sure they're nice and clean. Yeah, this mix your colors. That's this. The funnest part of this is seeing how this stuff is going to flow around, and you know you're going to get something by accident that you never even. Okay, that's a pretty good load for the second time in. So I think I've seen that one. Okay. All right. 
and let that go for another five minutes. Ten minutes on this set, as in five minutes it wasn't quite dropping down far enough for me to put in more like I wanted. So, let me see where it's at now. And see the bubbles are already coming up over there. Just elapsed another five minutes. And there's where we're at now. You remember those bubbles that were popping up over here? Well, you can see I've still got them trapped and I'm going to keep trying to trap them over there. Okay. Let's see what it's looking like now. So I'm going to go with the triple layer. I'm going to put it like this. I'm going to put that one in there just to let it drop and try to maintain the trap on the air that we got underneath it. And then as soon as that drops, I'm going to throw these two on top. A few more strips in a random order. Because when I get done, I'm going to have to, to get the air bubbles that will be up toward the top. i got to take off an eighth inch to three sixteenths usually, at least, sometimes a quarter of an inch. So I need some extra material up at the top. I'm trying to get a uh, one inch thick finished piece. Right around a minute for that piece to dry. So same process, except I'm going to scoot this one over to this edge. To trap them air bubbles over there. So that's probably going to take another minute and a half for that to drop and then I'll add the other, another, the blue one on top. Okay. Okay guys, we're getting close to the finish. You can see it, you know, my pan's to get full. I don't need it clear to the top. Okay. We're at 45 minutes total time so far. And those single layers were dropped laying down flat in about a minute and a half. Now that's probably going to take five minutes or so to drop because I put so much in there. So that's probably the final load. Now we'll see. I'll, uh, I'll come back on and show you when it's dropped down. Okay guys, look at... See how that layer is... It's taken, that's been well over five minutes and it's not laid down because it was stacked on top of each other. But if you'll notice, right over here, you can see that bubble. It's coming up and it's popping. If you look right here, you can see a couple of bubbles that have already popped. Now you can see the bubbles coming through and the patterns that they're starting to create. It's been cooking for an hour and 15 minutes total. And now you can see the bubbles popping and making the patterns that I want. This has been cooking for an hour and 35 minutes. And uh, one of the ways that I know when it's done is I start getting this brown crusty area on it up on the top of it. I had two elevator boards there to set that on. Okay, right here's a bubble that was trying to come up but it didn't make it. If you take cold steel picks and get on each side of that bubble you can open it up there. So I just popped that bubble. Um, here's another one here. There. So by popping those before it cools, now if it's plastic starts sticking, sticking to your pick, your pick is getting hot. Just switch to the other ends. That looked like one there. Here's a little bubble here. So when you open those bubbles up, you'll see there's a cavity underneath them where everything was coming through. And by opening them up now, this whole thing can still lay down without even going back in the oven. And that one there has another... See, there's a bubble. So just by doing that, I'm eliminating some stuff. I'm eliminating the defect that's going to be deeper down. Here's one right here. You can barely see it. But now when you open it up, you can see it plain as day. Now what you don't want to do is poke any of this stuff on the surface. You don't want to poke it down in. Because if you do that, 
you poke all this crud that you want to actually plane off. So if you have bubbles, open them. Just gently drag them open like that. And you can see that it's already pulling up from underneath to fill that where the bubble was. It's setting like that to cool. So when it gets cool, probably 10, somewhere between five to 15 minutes, it'll start undulating on the top. It'll start pulling away from the edges. And when that happens, then I'm gonna put this piece of plywood underneath it and another one on top of it and clamp it to keep it from warping. Okay guys, now you can see how it's, it's undulating. There's a pretty big dip here, it's dipping in there. Look at the edges of the pan. It's coming away from the edges of the pan. This has all happened in the last five minutes. I mean, see, it's, it's still hot, but these handles are cool enough. I can grab it for a minute. I put that in there. Make sure that these risers stay underneath where you, so you can get your clamps on. Okay, then that goes right back on there. I mean, you could burn yourself now. This is, it's still very, very hot. Okay, that's going to go on there. And you can see it's still spongy. Okay, this is a little tricky, but not, not super hard. You basically just got to just bring that one up finger tight. There we go. Okay. Once those two are on, then you, this is what happens. If you squeeze it too hard, too quick, it'll bubble up and out around. If I laid the clamps onto it now, that bubble would squirt up out of there. One I did yesterday squirted up and out this far. When I get this squeezing out the sides like that, I cool it with uh, compressed air. Okay guys, of course this was trying to squirt up out from underneath the board and you'll see if you look down here you can see it bulges out the side once the brick um, starts to shrink a little bit but I've let it cool for about five minutes and now I can start leveling up the board so I can look along the edge of the pan here and see if the how level the board is like this corner's a little high tighten it up this corner's a little high. Okay, so that little bit of tweaking that I did, things started getting, uh, it started getting hard to clamp these down. And uh, I'll take another five minute break there and make sure that no more of these develop. And it will continue to cool. And if no more of these try to burp out, which I don't see any more coming, then I can uh, tighten the clamps up a little bit more. So you just basically continue on like that for three or four more times. Uh, tighten them up, wait five minutes for it to cool, tighten them up, let it cool. See, here's one coming right here since we put the squeeze on it. That one's trying to come out right now, so you see it's still gushy. So I'll cool that with the uh, compressed air. Okay guys, this thing has uh, probably been sitting here for an, another hour since the last time I showed it. So then you can see it can just go around and just bring these clamps up a little bit. And that's probably the last time that I'll have to do that. So this is basically... Uh, now it's going to have to set overnight. <laughs>